the cum lane of Ablak Gemara. We are up to the test on the album of the Sukkah. The design of Mishnah. Sukkah Yishana, an old Sukkah. Beis Shammai Poisel. Beis Shammai says it is possible. It's not a valid Sukkah. Because a sukkah has to be built with shmo, you have to build it with shame sukkahs. So, um, and if a new sukkah, we're going to assume it's built with shmo. We'll soon see what's considered an old sukkah, what's a new sukkah. Basil Machshin, Basil says it's still kosher. You don't need a sukkah with shame, the yamtiv of sukkah. Yesterday we learned you need a sukkah with shame tzel for the shade. The Azehi sukkah yeshana, what's the definition of an old sukkah? Kosher osa koidim lechachleishi yam. It was built 30 days prior. To Yantif. Avo im also the Shem Chag, but if you build a sukkah having in mind the sukkahs, Afilu Mitchilis Hashanak Shaida, even from the beginning of the year, it is kosher. Now Rashi holds that this last part of the mission is really only relevant to Shammai, because Hill holds a sukkah doesn't have to be built with Shem Sukkah, so it really doesn't matter. However, Tesis says it applies in Vesil, because even in Vesil, you have to be Mechadish Dover in this Chach. You have to lift this Chach a little bit, put it back on. If you have Chach from last year, you have to do something to lift it or something to uh, make it to shame Sukkah for this year. And it's brought down to Shulchan Aruch. What's the Cheshmer of 30 days? So Rashi says, because 30 days before the Yom Tif, Shoyilin Behil Chazachach. We have a there that 30 days, Machlech is 30 days in two weeks. That 30 days before Yom Tif, you already start asking questions about uh, the Chach. However, however, we um, there's a machlekes the shulchan Bas Yosef says that this din of shailin behilchas achan shleishin yom is only thirty days prior to Pesach, which the Gemara discusses there, not the other yom tevim. But actually, clearly says it applies to sukkahs as well. It's like the machlekes that applies to shulos, but applies to sukkahs. And others want to say in defense of Bas Yosef. Over here, we're talking about shailin vidoshin. Shailin means if somebody asks a question, you, you won't say, hey, it's inappropriate. It's not inappropriate at all because it's three days before. But dosh means that a body have to start dashing. And the, the, the Bess Yosef said that shailin vidoshin is 30 days prior to Pesach, not the Yom Tif. Here now she says only shailin bilchas achad. That if you ask a question about sukkahs, it's relevant. But the Chachamim didn't start dashing until much closer. So therefore, it's not a kasha. Anyway, says the Gemara. Um, okay, says the Gemara. My time to be What's the It says in the Posse that Chag Hasukis seven days is to Hashem. What do you mean Chag Hasukis? It's called Chag, and it says Shivas Yom La Hashem. So what do you mean La Hashem? Sukkah Azuri La Shem Chag. Beini, when you have Sukkah for Shem Chag. So Rashi learns the Kvetches says Sukkahs la Hashem. Others say because it says Chag Hasukkahs. Sukkahs has to be made la Shem Chag. U Beis Hillel, Beis Hillel, la Hume Boile. What did he do with the Pasuk Chag Hasukkahs? He needs for another din altogether. Rav Sheishes, not Rav Sheishes, but Rav Akiva. Rav Sheishes said name Rav Akiva. That's um, that's even worse than um, than Rav Yechon saying the name Shem Yechoi. Who were all the people between Rav Akiva and Rav Sheishes? We already had, we had Mashum. Sometimes they would mention the first person and the last person, and not in, in the interim people. Menayin la'atse sukkah sha'asudin kol How do you know that the wood of a sukkah is, you don't have any benefit from it whatsoever, the entire sukkah is time. It belongs to Hashem. So what's that ayah from there? The time you will read him say, Oymer, Kashem, Shechol, Shem, Shemayim, Malchagiga, just like the Karm Chagiga. When you make it Kaidish, it becomes Kaidish, Kach, Chol, Shem, Shemayim, Malchagiga, same thing on a sukkah. I want that the sukkah becomes Kaidish. Remember, it says, Chag Hasukkah, Shivas Yomim, La Hashem, Ma Chag, just like Karm Chagiga. Now we're tied to Chag is Chagiga. Just like Chagiga is La Hashem, Av Sukkah, also Sukkah is La Hashem, the Sukkah is also La Hashem. So the big, a lot of Machlagis in here. First of all, the standard question that Tesis asks here and in other places, in Shabbos and other places, here it seems clearly that Mahat Tayri not have any benefit from the wood, wood of the sukkah, the walls of the sukkah, Atse sukkah, any part of the sukkah. And yet, in other places, say it's purely because of Muktza, that you're not allowed to. So Tesis gives generally two answers. That Mitzad, the Pasik, which is Mahat Tayri, is only, Dabain Tam says, the seventh for him, the minimum share of the sukkah. Anything beyond that, Mahat Tayri, you can have a not. That is also mitzad mukt. Another standard answer to this is that when the sukkah is upstanding, it's also mitzad. When the sukkah collapsed, 
it is also midrabon. So it collapses also midrabon that is muktzah. Then the Aini Yantav asked the famous question, how can people sit in the sukkah while it's raining? Since sukkah is also bahano, and since you're not fulfilling a mitzvah while you're in the sukkah when it's raining, so how can you sit in the sukkah? It's also bahano. If you think about it, and a lot of people talk about it. If you think about it, it's a very difficult question to understand. The fact is you're not having any hano. The only hano you're having in the sukkah is the fact you're doing a mitzvah. There's no other hano. Sitting in the rain while you're eating, nobody will tell you that while they're sitting in the sukkah and raining, they're enjoying it. What are they enjoying? The mitzvah. And mitzvah level honesty. So what's the problem? Never understood that question, but we all talk about it. Okay. And then you have the Vulagon who says the sukkah while it's raining is not a sukkah. So the Bechal is not a problem. Okay. The, the big machlek is in Paschim is, is a sukkah actually Kaidish? When we say over here that's like a Chagiga, we mean that only in certain respects you shouldn't use it, but it's not really Kaidish. Or we say it's actually Kaidish. If it is Kaidish, is it the schach only or the walls as well? And that could be a third answer on Tosh's question. The mukta is the walls and the schach is Kaidish. And therefore, it's two different things. When it says over here, Atse Sukkah, it means the wall, it means the schach of the Sukkah is Mahat Toyda Asa. And the walls of the Sukkah is Mutta. Anyway, let's continue the argument of Testament out of the middle of the page where Basil says a Sukkah does not have to be built with shame. Sukkahs, as long as they did for shade. And according to Bishamah, you build a Sukkah, you have to do it for the name of Sukkah. So, Ube Shammai, and we, we thought, brought a Pasik that says Chag HaSukkah, so we compare it to a carbon Chagiga, just like a carbon is sacred, so too the Sukkah is sacred, and you can't have any Hana from it. So therefore, we cannot learn, like Bishamai wants to learn, that Chag HaSukkah tells you the Sukkah has to be built for the purpose of Yom Tif, when we use it for something totally different. We're comparing it to Chagiga. Ube Shammai, and by the Lord Shammai also needs it for that positive, you know, can be right. Alamaita my Shammai, what's right in the middle of the page? What's Bishamai's logic? Ksiv Krachin is another positive. Chag Hasukas Tasalacha. It says a positive. Chag Hasukas Tasalacha, you should make for yourself. Shivas Yummy for seven days. So we dash in Sukkah Asuya, it says Chag Hasukas. So Sukkah has to be made. You have to have a mind. You're doing it to shame Yom Tov. Well, Basil, Basil, what did he do with that Pasik? He, he tied to the Pasik. We're going to have an Abchazayin argument with Rabbi Lezah Chachamim whether a sukkah has to be standing for seven days or you can even build a sukkah in Chalamoid. Rabbi Lezah says that a sukkah has to be standing in seven days. And, um, and the Chachamim say, no, Chag has sukkahs, Tas, Chashiv, Yom, you can build yourself a sukkah any day during the seven days. In other words, the sukkah itself does not have to last seven days. So, um, so the Rebbe Shammai says, I learned from the Pasuk, Chag HaSukas, Tasalcha, that a sukkah has to be made for Chag, for, for sukkahs. And Hill says, no, I use it that any day of sukkahs, you can build yourself a sukkah. How you build a sukkah? Rebbe Shammai, he holds like a Belezet. He doesn't agree in halacha, because he holds, ain't no isa sukkah v'chay l'shumay. You cannot make a sukkah, it has to last for seven days. Says the Gemara, which also consistent with Shammai's will be learned a few days ago, that Shammai holds that sukkah has to be more than just temporary. It has to be slightly permanent. So therefore, that's also a sign of permanency. It lasts for more than one day. Says the Gemara, who basilu, who says you don't have to build a sukkah with Shem Shemayim, Leslu, who did Rabbi Yehuda Merav, doesn't he agree with Rabbi Yehuda Merav regarding tzitzis? So it says over there, also you have to make yourself. And then we say, when you make tzitzis, when you produce tzitzis, it has to be lishma. So why is sukkah any different? Because what did Rabbi Yudam say? Rabbi Yudam Rav, also min ha If you made a sukkah, you made the tzitzes out of the koitin. Koitin literally means thorns. Let's say the ends of threads, you didn't, you know, you're speaking to but not the balls or something, you just leave it hanging. And if you have enough end of threads dangling, you want to turn them into tzitzes. Or just mean, um, and those are like, they're, they're, stick, they're pokey like, like, like thorns because they come to a very, to a tip and you make a little bit of nada there or something, or you rip the thread and it's pointy. Or min hatimin, or nimin, just regular threads can come to an end, and it's all a little bit hanging from the bottom. Or umin hagardin. Let's say that you have fringes at the end of your talus. So they're, they're puzzle. Why are they all puzzle? Because you didn't do them with shame tzitzes. They just happen to end up there, which is interesting. Which means that if, according to this gemara, it seems clearly, at least where Rashi learns, that tzitzes doesn't have to be extraneous to the baggage, you know, strings you bring over and you hang it up. Technically, tzitzes can be from the baggage itself. They can become the tzitzes of your baggage. The only problem here is that it happened naturally. You didn't do it deliberately. But what about min hasisin? What about min hasisin? Let's say you just take a ball and you hang it over there. And the end, shade it is kosher. Why? Because as long, even though the, the ball is string, you didn't produce it to shame tzitzes. But when you attach it to the baggage, you did it to shame tzitzes. That's good enough. 
I, what about the, the string that wasn't spun, L'shem Tzitzis? It doesn't matter. We don't need Tavia, L'shem Tzitzis. However, if you read the Mishmol Amalei, Apostle Amzol, he says, Im Tzitzis and Amzol, the beginning to this moment, we need the spinning of the, of the threads also to be L'shem. And Ash explains that Abihudi used to learn by Rav, and then afterwards he moved over to Shmuel. That's why we always find Abihudam Rav, then Abihudam Shmuel, because he learned from both of them. <clears throat> And what he and Rash said more than that. He did, that wasn't Stam Shmuel said it. He sat down before Shmuel and he told him over everything that Rav told him. And then Shmuel would say, I they agree, disagreed. But what does he make clearly? They're only arguing regarding whether you need spinning Lishma, but everyone agrees that you need Tzitzis to be made Lishma. So why is it that Tzitzis have to be made Lishma? And Sukkis, according to Basil, doesn't. Says so the Gemara. Um, uh, so how come by sukkah we don't say that you also need to build the sukkah lishma for the sake of Yom Tev? Says he's more shiny. How some this different? Don't cross the pasuk gedilim tassel lecha. He says that it says that in pasuk gedilim strings etc. So you have to make yourself. It says lecha. You should make for yourself lecha l'shem chayvach. When you make your tzitzis, make sure you have a mind. You're doing it l'shem mitzvah tzitzis. Hachanami chagas sukkahs tassel lecha. Make yourself sukkahs lecha l'shem chayvach. Says the Gemara. So why is Sukkot any different than Tzitzit? Sukkot also it says Tasselcha. So Hidashim by Tzitzit. It says that the Tasselcha means you have to make it Lashem Tzitzit. So why by Sukkot don't we say the same thing? Tasselcha, you make it Lashem Tzitzit. Says the Gemara, I hope it's by the Nile, the Mogute Gzula. We need that to, to exclude Gzula. We need that to ex- exclude Gzula. Says the Gemara. In other words, by Sukkot, we need Lacha to tell you don't use a stolen Sukkot. Says the Gemara, "Hasan nam bari lemutik zol." So tzitzis also, you know, yeah, you, 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 we need the pasuk to tell you don't use stolen tzitzis. Says the Gemara, "Hasan sivur chin is another pasuk by tzitzis." Says twice, "But asu lohem by the pasuk of tzitzis, but asu lohem they should make for themselves mishalem." So we know already you shouldn't use stolen tzitzis. So what do we do with pasuk by gedilim tassel lecha that we say that it has to be the shem tzitzis by sukkah? We only have one pasuk. We say first and foremost, pasuk shad is don't steal the sukkah. So taste is no other shame. Ask a simple question. Why do we need a pasik that you're not allowed to steal a sukkah? Isn't it a mitzvah habba bavera? Just like we learn by lulav, you still we learn a third page. You steal a lulav. You're doing a mitzvah lulav by stealing, by stealing. So it's a mitzvah habba bavera. That you ate it. So what's the difference? Why do we need a pasik for sukkah? So Teisus here gives a very important insight. Teisus over here says that he believes that the mitzvah habba bavera is only us with rabban, not mehatera. So that's why the Torah has a pasuk: "Don't steal a sukkah," because my Torah not gets it. Torah of Lama and Olav, they clearly learn that mitzvah of Avera is actually psalm hatayna. The simple answer is this is Shmuel, and Shmuel, according to Torah, says that Lama and Olav actually doesn't agree with the whole principle of mitzvah of Avera, and, and because he doesn't believe in the, in the principle of mitzvah of Avera, because Torah says over there that this, and the other days of Yom Tov, stolen sukkah according to Shmuel might be good. I mitzvah Avera is not a problem. Either Shmuel doesn't believe mitzvah bavera at all, or he holds when the mitzvah is only mid rabbanon, there's no mitzvah habo bavera. The ritual here gives a very important insight. He says, you know, where do we find mitzvah bavera? Only in two places, by carbon. We, we're going to learn about Bakama and Gitten, carbon noy, v'loy ha-gozel, only by carbon, and by luluf. Only those two, you apply the rule of mitzvah bavera. Why? Because by luluf and by carbon, they are both there to appease Hashem. The lulav is there to sway back and forth so it brings the winds from all directions to rain. And the carbon is to appease Hashem. When you want to appease Hashem and you and you um, and you use it, you use a carbon that you stole or lulav you stole, you're like you're like uh, taunting Hashem. And therefore you're not going to be it's not going to be an appeasement whatsoever. And that's why over there, mitzvah Aveda. But all other mitzvahs, there's no such thing, mitzvah Aveda. That's more or less the ritual, even though he brings a Yishalmi that says the Matzik Zulu, and he talks about that. So what's according to that, if you don't have a posik by Tfilnok, you have by Tzitzit, so therefore it, it film, the stolen film would be Mutamed Araisa? Yeah. Yeah. In fact, there's a whole Chakir, if you do Mitzvah of Avera, what's is the Pshat is, you're not Yaitz in the Mitzvah at all, or the Pshat is, you Yaitz in the Mitzvah, but you didn't have Avera. That's another issue. And then there's a famous Minchas Chinuch, at least if I remember it. The Minchas Chinuch wants to say as follows. There's a difference between if we say it's Mitzvah of Avera, or if we say that it's a, a posik. If it's mitzvah of Aveda, the pshat is, he didn't do the mitzvah, but nor did you do Aveda. What do you mean? Mitzvah sukkah says the mitzvah chenuch, and this is a whole, as they say, a raid on its own. The mitzvah sukkah is not a mitzvah to eat in a sukkah. It's an Aveda to eat outside of a sukkah. If you don't want to eat the whole yom tif, don't eat. Except the yom tif meals, but if you don't want to eat, don't eat, don't sit in a sukkah. There's no mitzvah 
go and sit in a sukkah on sukkahs. It's only if you eat, don't eat outside of a sukkah. So let's say you stole the sukkah. Mitzvah Baba Veda. Okay, I didn't do a mitzvah, but did I do an, did I eat outside of a sukkah? No. And therefore, Abu Yitzhak Chalapachas sitting, um, I'll be able to sit uh, out mitzvah babeda, I will still have not done Navera eating outside of a sukkah. Comes along the Pasik, the sukkah tasulcha, you should know that if you stole the sukkah, you're not sitting in a sukkah at all. You're doing an Aveda. That that he says, that the, when you're sitting in a sukkah and eating the rest of Yom Tif, all you're doing is to avoiding an Aveira and not a mitzvah is a big argument and most Akhraim don't accept that. They believe, even though there's, there's no proactive chiv to go ahead and eat, it's not like Rabbi Lezer holds you have to eat two meals a day, but there's no proactive chiv to eat in the sukkah. But if you do eat in the sukkah, it's not just you're avoiding an Aveira, you're actually doing a mitzvah. So, um, so that also is a big discussion and they don't agree. And the then same, the same thing could be with, with uh, tzitzis, because tzitzis is only if you've got Alba Comfort. So similar to yeah, something. but nobody says that. It's just everybody says, I actually, to, uh, actually, take it back. The Mordechai, there's a Mordechai in Shabbos, which is brought down in Simon Yugimun Shonarch, which talks about on Shabbos, if your tzitzis rip, if you can continue walking with your tzitzis. Is there a mitzvah to with tzitzis, or is there a way to walk around without tzitzis? As Arba Kampus Beg knows, once you have Arba Kampus, now is there a chiv to go put on tzitzis? Is it mitzvah, say, putting on tzitzis, or is just you're doing an Aveda walking around with outsiders. Similar to Moshe, you're right. Similar to what you're saying. But that's actually in the Rishayim, the Mordechai, which I'm going to put down your Gimel, and it's discussed there by Rikas. Okay. These are a few of the answers, a little bit tidbit of, uh, of this whole sugi. It's very long, this sugi, this little piece right at the end. Now the next Gemara. I told you yesterday that the, that the next Gemara here, the Rabbi Shlema Zevin writes, this is one of the most difficult sugyas in Shas. Even though we look at more Rashi, it's not so difficult, but if you go through all the Rashaynim and the Kharainim, then we'll just learn Rashi Shit. Mishnah. You build a sukkah beneath a tree. It's ki'ilu asabatecha bait. As if you build a sukkah inside a house, it's not valid. Sukkah out gabe sukkah. If you build a sukkah on top of another sukkah, above a sukkah, or el yayna is kshayna. The, the sukkah above is kasha. But the bottom one is a sukkah tachas sukkah, which is not kosher. But the top one is kosher, as long as it's chach and all that is kosher. The Gemara is going to give us four different scenarios regarding a sukkah, gabi sukkah on the bottom of the page. Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda says, Im ein and the Gemara concludes, the means if, if it's impossible to live or very difficult to live on the top one, then according to Chachamim, the fact is that you can still live on the top one. That becomes the main sukkah. The bottom one is a sukkah tachas sukkah. But if you cannot live on the, if it's, if it's difficult to live on the top one, hatach toinu kshay. The bottom one is kosher. In other words, everyone will agree that if you could live comfortably on the top one, that the bottom one is sitting underneath, not out of the stars of the sky, but underneath another sukkah. No good. Everyone agrees that if you impossible to live on the top one, then really it's not a house. All you have is the bottom one. Then it is good as long as you know the schach and everything else within twenty hours. The machlekes here is you can live on the top one aided chak through difficulties. What happens then? Abuda says the fact is that somebody can live in there for the bottom one. Um, uh, if the fact is that it's very difficult to live there, therefore the, that's not really considered at home, and the bottom one is kosher. And the chacham say the fact that if you really wanted to, you can. Therefore, the bottom one is possible. So says according, Rabbi, on, according to Rabbi Yehuda, if you can't sleep in there, but you can eat in the top sukkah, okay? he doesn't go into that at all. That's the mordechai. We spoke in the Chacham we spoke about it last time. <clears throat> the fact is, you can eat there. Is that good enough? Amar Rav says Rav, this is all talking about be Elon if the tree that the sukkah is beneath tilase meruba mechamase there's more shade than sun. Abel chamase meruba mechamase if there's more sun than shade, the tree only has a couple of branches than shade. Big okay, um, and then it's kosher. Okay, so what am I? How do you know to say this? But the Tony it says in the Mishnah, ki ilu also the rabbis. The Gemara is comparing. The Mishnah is saying sitting under a tree is just like sitting in the house. Now the where do you learn that you're not allowed to sit in the house? It says in the pasuk sukkah v'loy tachas ba'is. The same pasuk says sukkah v'loy tachas ilu. Same drasha. So what are you gaining by saying that a tree is like a house? the Mishnah ki ilu also the rabbis. Listen, psula. Let us just say that it's, 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 it's disqualified. Al-Hakam Mashal will come to teach you the Elon Dumi the Bais. The tree is similar to a house. Ma Bais, when is a house possible? Tilosim Meruba Chamos says more shade than sun. Af Elon. So to an Elon, Tilosim Meruba Mechamos says the tree has more shade than sun. It's no good. Says the Gemara. 
if you have more sun than shade, so what? Let's say you tell me the branches are, are only sparse, so therefore they don't provide that much shade, it's kosher. But the fact is, you have chach here, the tree, because it's mechuber, the posik says, it has to be something that you can collect, something has to be tolush, it has to be detached. Here the branches are attached to the tree, it's posel is chach. Okay, so you got only a couple of branches, but the couple of branches are joining your regular chach. So you have a situation here of a, a common nation of schach posel with schach kosher. Says the Gemara, Amar Rapopar Rapopar says, Bishah Chavton, you bent down the branches and you blended them in with the rest of schach, so now they will be bottle bereaved. The big machlek is here is when it says that Elon Tzilosim Merubah Chamasai, the branches of Tzilosim Chamasai, it is posel. What happens if the, why is it posel? What happens if the schach and your sukkah is also Tzilosim Merubah Chamasai? And what happens if you, um, if you remove those branches, you still have plenty of shade just from your schach, is it still kosher enough? Do or do we say that all the schach beneath the the shade is um all the schach beneath the shade is is removed and therefore if you still have tilosim merubah chamasa and the rest of the sukkah is good if not now do we say it doesn't help if the tree is tilosim merubah chamasa even though you also have tilosim merubah chamasa even if you don't have the tree the fact that the tree is possible do we say that even if in the case of chamasa merubah tilosa all the schach underneath them have to be taken away and then you have to still measure and see whether you have tilosim merubah chamasa Many different shit was here in the Gemara. Says so the Gemara, what do you do? Rashi learns Choftan means you basically not that you cut them off, but you just pull them down. They're still attached to the tree, and they blend it in with the rest. Says so the Gemara, and if you blend in the rest, according to Rashi, it's bottle beray. My member, what are you telling me? And the question is, we don't say bottle beray if it can recognize. So obviously, you bent it down, you crushed it down, and blend it in. You cannot recognize at all what's what. Uh, I would have thought, I would have thought, and another question, how can you take the branches and push them down? We know a rule that if you have, let's say, 59 times kosher uh, against the tray, it's not going to add a little bit more kosher to make a 60. It's only if a piece of tray falls into 60 times, it's kosher. So how can you go ahead and bend the branches down to make a bottle? Another issue they will talk about. So the Gemara says, "Our Papa Bishachavti bent them down. He Bishachavti Ma'ila Mem. What's the Chiddush? Nay, Ma'od Avur for Nigzer Heicher the Chavti and Ata Heicher the Loy Chavti. And let's be Goyzer when you bend down. Next time we're going to, you're not even going to bend it down. You see that people see branches out there. They'll think, oh, you want to have branches? Kamash Malon the Loy Gazinu. We're not going to make up this Gzeda. And since you bent it down, you did the right thing. Obviously, you know what you're doing. We're not worried. So the Gemara Hana Mitzinina. This idea that we're not Goyzer, we're not worried." Is we really learned that concept as well. Where it says later on, we we'll learn hidle ole esa geffen. Let's say you brought down vines to your sukkah, and the last, and along with like kisum and different kind of branches, um, the sikha gabon, these are all attached. And then you put um, atop of them, kisum is like vines that grow, creeper grow, that grow all, all over the walls. And therefore, it's attached, it has roots in the ground, but it spreads everywhere. And um, crawls up like ivy crawls up the walls, and you made schach atop the psulit as possible. The im hoya sicha har b'mehen. But if let's say the schach you put on top of these vines is a lot more than them, so now they're blending in together. Or you should cut them, or you cut them off. Shade is kasha. I hear what's the situation? Elam shlechav you didn't blend them, you didn't blend them two together. Then you have two different entities. You have schach posel, and you have schach kosher, and it comes out that you're using schach that's attached to the ground. And even though it's not together, so what? But it's there. It adds shade to your sukkah. A lav kishachavten must be told that you bent you bent them down and they blend together for the, the the ivy or whatever as they have the, the vines are all bottled to the kosher schach. Shmam lagazin and v'zikluv me not goyzer. Someone says no. Maud, I would have thought had he made the out of thought. But the Yevit, there it says, Hidla, you already did it. Oh, you did it already, it will be Mekel. I will chathila, chathila, to go ahead and to bend down this chach and use it like, Kamash Lam, that you could, that you were not going it whatsoever at all, and um, and it's all right. <clears throat> okay, so let's think about it further. Sukkah, um, Agabi Sukkah. So it says in the mission, if you have one sukkah on top of another sukkah, Torah, what we learned, it says in the Posse, Basukas. In single teshu in a sukkah, but loy be sukkah shetach a sukkah, because the sukkah under the sukkah will be two sukkahs. The Torah says sukkah single, only one sukkah you should sit in, not in two. That's the psul of a sukkah under a sukkah. 
Says the Gemara Adra, but we read it by Sukkois. But Sukkois is plural, tarti too. So maybe on the contrary, you could sit in a sukkah inside a sukkah, a sukkah inside a house. See, we look at the way it's written. Now, we had a few days ago, big machlekes. If you follow the way it's written, remember that follow the way it's written, or we go after the way it's, um, you read it. But taste over there already explained. When is there an argument? If you learn, if you read it, if you go one way, it comes up with one shot. And if you go another way, it comes up with a totally different shot. And therefore, the question is, um, do we follow the Cree or do we follow um, the Xiv? However, um, what do you call? We had a vote of it, sorry. Do you follow the Creed of Xiv? But if they're not mutually exclusive, you can use both and th th there's no contradiction, then everyone agrees you'll follow the Mercedes and you follow the Mikra. So therefore, since the Mercedes clearly says in singular, Sukas, therefore, it's. Um, it's, it's forbidden. It says he's more fine. Let's continue. Amr Abimia, Abimia says, Pa'amim, on occasion. Now we follow a whole cup. Sometimes you stay in Kshayda. Sometimes the sukkah, underneath the sukkah, they are both kosher. You can sit in the upstairs one, you can sit in the bottom one, and they're both kosher. We'll see them in how. Pa'amim, she stay in Psulis. Sometimes they are both possum. Pa'amim, she ha tachtoyne Kshayda. Sometimes the bottom one is kosher, and the elyayne of Psulis, and the top one is possum. And sometimes the bottom one is possible, but the hell the top one is kosher. What's going on? You want to explain? Pa'amim sometimes sishte and kshede. Sometimes they are both kosher. Hey chidami, what are we talking about? Kigoyin shatachtoyne. The bottom sukkah is chamosa marumatzilosa. The bottom sukkah is chach is more sun than shade. So in other words, there's no roof there. The hell yoyne tilosa marumatzilosa. The top one is more shade than sun. And you're talking about that the top one is within the schach of the top one is within 20 amas of the ground outside. So therefore the bottom sukkah can also use the schach from the top sukkah because the bottom sukkah is, is within 20 amas of the, of the schach on top. And the bottom sukkah has, does not have a roof of its own because its own roof is more sun than shade. So therefore you, um, they're both, you can sit on the top on the bottom, you're really sitting in one sukkah. Bottom line is sitting in one sukkah. I'm not sure practically how it works. If you only have the yeah, most chach and shade, how sturdy can the ceiling be? Unless you have, you know, a few planks over there nailed in, and the people on top can sit on those planks. Because you remember, you have to have more sun than shade. It's not that the floor is is, is a, whatever the covering you have there on the floor is very sparse. Okay, so that's case number one. Case number two. Um, Sometimes they're both possible. They're both more shade than sun. Okay, they're both more shade than sun. We understand why the bottom one is possible because it's sitting a sukkah underneath another sukkah. But why should the top one be possible? But the top one is more than 20 amas above, not the ground outside. Who cares? It's above 20 amas from the floor of the, of the top one. In other words, you walking into the top sukkah from the floor of the top sukkah to the schach is 21 amas. But if the floor of the top sukkah is only 15 amas, let's say below the schach, even though from the ground outside you're 22 amas, the schach, who cares? Remember, a person sitting inside the sukkah, for him the schach is less than 20 amas. Um, then we say, pa'omim, sometime, tachtoinik, shader, something, the bottom is kosher. And the yon is possible, hey, chidomi, how can that be? Very simple. The bottom one has more shade than sun, so the bottom one is kosher. But the yoyin is chamosa merubah metzilosa. But the top one is not considered chach. Why? Because there's more sun than shade. And and therefore the the bottom one is not a sukkah tacha sukkah because there's no sukkah on top. There's no ceiling there. <clears throat> now and the and they're both within twenty amas of the ground. You must say they're both within twenty. Rashi holds they're both within twenty amas of the ground. Why? Because if the top one is above 20 amas, then that's called schach posel. It's not just you don't have enough schach, it's schach posel. And then goes back to the mother we just learned, that schach posel joining with schach kosher is a problem. It's only when choft, and only you mix them together. But over here you have a schach on top of, on the top circle, 
the schach on top of which is schach puzzle, it's above 20 yamas. The schach on the bottom has more shade than sun, but remember all the schach that's underneath, the schach over there on top has to be removed, it will be a major problem. So Rashi clearly learns that schach above 20 yamas is considered schach puzzle. Okay, so therefore, what we're talking about, it's within 20 yamas, just so you have a very, you know, very few pieces of schach. Therefore, it's chamos of ruin silos, and the and sukkah on the bottom is kosher. Rabbein Atam argues, and he definitely he says, even if the schach above is higher than 20 amas, it's not an issue at all. You know why it's not an issue? He says that schach above 20 amas is not possible, just it's not kosher. It's not that schach possible is if the schach is attached to the tree. The problem there is not that it's not kosher, the problem is that it's possible schach. It says in the title, you have to gather it, it has to be something that's gatherable. But if the schach is above 20 amas, it's not that schach possible, just that the schach hasn't yet reached a place where it can become kosher. And therefore, according to Rabbein Atam, the, the, you can even read that the sukkah on top is above 20 amas. It's still not a problem because it doesn't puzzle the sukkah on the bottom because it's not a question of puzzle schach joining together with kosher schach. So you can say, moreover, kain betavai betech asi. Upa'omim and sometimes, el yoinuk shayla, sometimes the top one is kosher, but tachtoinuk, so the bottom one is puzzle. Hey, chidomi hakanabi. You're going to tavayu to losum ruva chamasa. They both see lost sun, they both have more shade than sun. The kind the El Yen Betech Essen and the top one is within 20. So the top one is kosher. And the and the, the top one is kosher. the top one is within 20 ambers and it's more shade than sun. And the bottom one is possible because and the bottom one is possible because there's more sun than shade. Uh, what you call it? Um, there's more shade than sun. Before we learned if the bottom one is more sun than shade, then really it's one big sukkah, it's all kosher. But here the bottom one has more shade than sun. So it's a sukkah. You're sitting in a sukkah underneath a sukkah, and that is a problem. Okay, so the Gemara, um, maybe we'll stop here tomorrow, because not tomorrow. We're going to learn 